everyone, today I am answering a very interesting question posted on our Facebook group by community member Nathan Sizemore. Can any of these flight sims be used for real flight training or not even close? In a nutshell, yes, but what exactly is it that you can practice with a home sim? This video is sponsored by Pro Flight Trainer. Pro Flight Trainer offers high quality helicopter controls for both the consumer and professional market. Their flagship is the Pro Flight Trainer Puma, which was recently updated. The fifth generation Puma, known as the Puma X, gives you great performance in a compact unit with a cyclic collective and throttle. Dual throttles and tow brakes are also offered as an option. Check out their website for more information. You can also find the link down in the video description. Thank you very much to Pro Flight Trainer for sponsoring this video. I'm not a real-world pilot or an instructor myself, but I have been working with these companies and educating myself with professionals who combine have hundreds of years of experience. That doesn't make me a first-hand expert, but it does give me a fantastic perspective with a multitude of points of view from all these different personalities. What I have found out throughout the years is that pretty much any sim can be used to help you on your path to becoming a real-world pilot. These pieces of software will not replace real lessons. And unless they are being used in your flight school with a certified bundle of software, hardware and instruction, they will not count towards your hours. But you can use sims to add value to your training if you know how to. And you should talk to your instructor about it because she or he will be able to help you out and guide you and prevent you any bad habits from piling up. So where do exactly sims help you with? Well, first of all, you will be learning the basics of flying, the very fundamentals, the stuff that a lot of people are unable to wrap their heads around to start with. You will learn how an aircraft flies. And especially with helicopters, you are getting into an amazing ride. I remember when I started flying helicopters in a sim, I just saw them as slow, glorified elevators. That's right, I was guilty of committing heresy just out of pure ignorance. But the more I learned about them, the the more I love and respect the complexity of helicopters, the physics behind them, the engineering and the women and men flying them. If you start learning about our aircraft and especially helicopters fly even before you start your flight lessons, that is a big plus. You'll also understand things that for simmers are very basic. Why are runways numbered the way they are? Why do aircraft take off facing a direction sometimes and other times they face another completely different direction? This may sound very basic to you because you already are in the hobby or in the industry. And let's be honest, it is. But a lot of people don't know the basics and they will learn them with sims and with the help of the community. Going into something more advanced, you can learn how to navigate from VOR to VOR or how to operate your GPS. There are some fantastic GPS products for sim out there, but you can even learn with the most basic ones that come with the default aircraft. You can learn, for example, how to tune frequencies on your radios. I know of pilots that use sims to maintain their IFR skills. Some of them are in the military and they use commercially available helicopters and sims to help them out. And some of these guys did it when they were learning, when they were in training. You can learn how to get more comfortable by following checklists as well. This seems like another very simple and almost dumb thing, but feeling at ease following in a checklist and not getting yourself lost as you go through the items can really help you take off that edge and anxiety. Simple tasks can make your life harder if you are not comfortable enough with them. And keeping an item on a checklist is not usually a good thing and your instructor may get a little mad at you. Learn how to use them in a sim and you will become more at ease with them in real life. You can also use sims to get familiar with the area you are going to fly at. That may depend on the quality of the scenery you are using, but you have plenty of good options out there. Microsoft Flight Simulator is obviously the big name I have to point out in this regard, but the truth is, most sims will do a good job at it. They will provide you with enough visual information for you to feel more comfortable with both approaches and departures in the airfield you will be using for your real-world training. Another area where you can get an advantage over is radio communication. You have access to free services such as VATSIM or iVAYO where you can start learning, but if you want to go a bit more pro, check out Pilot Edge. Pilot Edge is a professional ATC service of great quality. It is a paid service, but well worth it. Remember those military guys I mentioned before that use SIMs for IFR practice? Well, some of them use Pilot Edge as well. 
Another thing that is a huge help is cockpit familiarization. If you can get a nice helicopter that resembles the one you'll be flying in real life, you will not feel so overwhelmed when you get into the cockpit. You will recognize and identify gauges, controls, knobs and switches. You will know what everything is and what everything does. And that will drastically decrease the amount of anxiety you will feel. I feel like I need to touch something here that is really important and that is hardware and flight models. While there's great hardware out there such as the Pro Flight Trainer Puma and this will help you figure out how things work in real life, this can also be prone to have you starting to get bad habits. There is such a thing as negative training and you will be risking it if you rely too much on your sims and have little to no experience in the real world. So do take that in consideration because not everything you take from a sim is applicable in the real world. You need to be very conscient about this and responsible in the way you use your sim. Flight simulation programs can be an amazing tool even if you are just using the base sim with the default aircraft. You don't need a steady level aircraft to harvest value from a sim and you don't need a specific sim either. With some imagination and the guidance and support of your flight instructor, you can use these amazing affordable tools on your own time for as long as you wish and leverage them to your benefit on your path to become a pilot. I've had pilots and student pilots telling me that the way they use sims before they start getting the license and also during that process has allowed them not to shorten up their courses as it was not the intention but to focus more on the areas they were struggling a bit more with. That made them better pilots since they spent more time perfecting and improving those rough edges instead of having to deal with all the information for the first time. If you are a bit lost regarding sims, hardware and how to start flying helicopters in a sim, I have just the video for you that will help you guide through all that. And why not check this video out where I tell you the differences between the throttle and the collective as well. I'll see you on those videos. Until then, take care and fly safe.